Welcome back. Today we're going to be finishing the equations unit by talking about properties. So if you haven't watched all the other videos, you want to go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're going to get jumping into properties right now. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about properties. We're talking about two types of properties this year. We're going to be talking about properties of real numbers and properties of equality. So let's go ahead and get started right now. So here we are. We've got to talk first about the commutative property and the associative property. Remember, with the commutative property, it can be of addition or multiplication. And a summary of it is, is changing the order does not change the sum or the product. So we've got a couple examples down there. When I've got x plus 3, it equals 10. The same thing would be true if I had 3 plus x equaling 10. doesn't matter what order I add them in. I'm still going to end up being 10. Same thing with multiplication. y times 2 is equal to negative 18. The same thing is true if it was 2 times y equals negative 18. The order does not matter. Then when we're talking about the associative property, we've got the property of, again, of addition and multiplication. It applies to both. And basically, when we're talking about that, the summary says that changing the grouping does not change the sum or the product. So we've got a couple of examples down there. I've got x plus 2 inside the parentheses, plus 4 on the outside. So if I'm going to change the grouping, I'm going to just move the grouping around the 2 and the 4 instead. And again, it will give me the same thing as 9. And looking at the multiplication side of things, I got the parentheses around the 2 and the y. So I'm going to shift the grouping to be around the 3 and the 2. And again, the answer will end up being the same. So again, that's the commutative associative property applies to both addition and multiplication. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more properties. So moving on here, we're talking about the inverse and identity properties. So the inverse property works for both addition and multiplication. We have other names for them. They are the additive inverse property or the multiplicative inverse property. The additive inverse says that the sum of a number and its opposite will give us zero. So if we're looking at our example down there, we've got x plus 2. If we were to make that negative 2, positive 2 and negative 2 would give us zero. So the positive 2 and the negative 2, they are inverses. They cancel each other out, and they give us zero. When we're talking about the inverse property of multiplication, it says the product of a number and its inverse equals 1. So again, we're talking about inverse and opposites. So the inverse of 3 fifths would be 5 thirds. And when I multiply that together times 3 fifths, I should get positive 1 or 1y. One when talking about the identity property, the additive identity property or the multiplicative identity property, when we're talking about the additive identity property. It says the sum of a number and 0 equals that same number. So x plus 0 is going to give you x. And we're talking about the summary of a, prod of a multiplicative identity, the product of a number and 1 equals itself. So again, 1 times y is going to give you y. Let's go ahead and take a look at another property. So here we are at the zero property of multiplication, and it says the product of any value and 0 is going to be 0. So for example, 4 times 0 will be 0. So anything multiplied times 0 is 0. That's something we may already know. So this brings us to the end of the properties of real numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the properties of equality now. So the properties of equality are very important because the properties of inequality are what will allow us to solve equations. So we have two properties here right now. We're talking about the addition of property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. And the addition property of equality states that if you add 3 to both sides in the example of this equation, the equation remains balanced. So if you add anything to both sides of the equation, the equation will remain balanced. So I've got x minus 3 equals 10. So if I add 3 to both sides, the equation remains balanced. And I'm going to take that negative 3 and that positive 3. They're going to cancel each other out. And 10 plus 3 is 13. So I've added 3 to both sides. My equation has remained balanced. Same thing with the subtraction property of equality. If you subtract 5 from this case of both sides, the equation remains balanced. So again, whatever you take away, as long as you take away from both sides, the equation will remain balanced. So x plus 5, if I subtract 5 from both sides, and 20 minus 5 is going to give me 15, the positive and negative 5 are going to cancel each other out, leaving me with just x. So again, our equation remains balanced as long as we do something to both sides. So the addition and subtraction equality properties of equality state, as long as you're doing that same thing to both sides, then that equation is going to remain balanced. Let's take a look at the last two properties. 
Here we are talking about the multiplication and division property of equality. The multiplication property of equality states that if you were to multiply by negative 2 on both sides, then the equation will remain balanced, just like I see down here. I'm the negative 2 and the negative 2 are going to give me 1 or 1x, and the 4 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 8. So again, if I'm doing something to both sides of the equation, then the equation will remain balanced. On the division property of inequality, if you divide both sides by 4 in this case, the equation remains balanced. So if I divide both sides by 4, 4 divided by 4 is 1 and 1x. One 28 divided by 4 is 7. So again, if you're doing something to both sides of the equation, then the, pro the equation remains balanced. And that's what we're really talking about with the properties of equality. We want things to be equal. That is why they are called the properties of equality. This brings us to the end of the video on property. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one.